Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and Marvel's Secret Invasion reached its finale with the lowest score from critics in Marvel Studios history, with Episode 6 receiving only 13% on Rotten Tomatoes. Now yes, I am no fan of the way Rotten Tomatoes calculates these scores, but from a qualitative temperature check in the days since the finale, Secret Invasion just seems to have left a universally sour taste in the mouths of viewers, which seems to come from a disappointment over characters like Maria Hill, Talos, and Sorin killed off with really no sense of resolution to those deaths in the finale, questions left unanswered with how long exactly Rhodey has been a scroll, some inconsistency with the characters of Gravik and Gaia's decision making, and Gaia's new insane power set at the end of the series, and really just what we're supposed to take away from the focus on Nick Fury's marriage, and in general, all these missed opportunities to do a live action secret invasion and a scroll storyline over four years of MCU history that just ends like this. Look, I'm not here to do a hate video. Overall, I enjoyed watching this series and I had a pretty good time with it. For a more specific review, you can check out me and Maud Garrett's criticisms in our finale review on The Break Room, and I did a deeper analysis of each scene in my Easter egg breakdown, but here in this video, I want to look back on the whole series and analyze what went wrong with Secret Invasion, the challenges it faced, the real reason I think we feel disappointed, and I really want to try to clear up some of the bad takes going around about how the sausage is really made. Like for example, the strike said nothing to do with this. And yes, there is a strike from SAG-AFTRA in the WGA right now, and SAG has informed us that entertainment journalists like New Rockstars are allowed to cover movies and TV shows. Shows. We just want to appreciate how hard it is for writers and actors to work under these conditions and how they deserve fair pay. There were some great moments of artistry in Secret Invasion. Let's not overlook those. Specifically, the acting of Olivia Coleman, Don Cheadle, Samuel L. Jackson, Charlene Woodard, and everyone else in the cast. And ultimately, I do think some amazing bits of dialogue were written. It was just the context around that dialogue that didn't hit with us. And let's start by saying that Secret Invasion has not disappointed fans out of a sense of Marvel fatigue, in my opinion. I'm not even sold that there is a Marvel fatigue or a superhero fatigue after two of the biggest movies this summer were Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 and Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, and Marvel fans, from what I can tell, still seem pretty excited about the upcoming titles. I'm also hesitant to blame the writing. Now, I know a lot of you are like, come on, dude. And I will admit that, yeah, there were some major issues with Secret Invasion's episode structure, its internal logic, and the character arcs. Like, it's probably a weird sign how the episode runtimes vary so much in length. Some people say that they wish that they had more episodes. I honestly think they could have done with less. Like, in the six episodes of the series, you could have made one killer two hour film. But talking about some of the specific choices in the scripts this season, yeah, it does not feel great that Maria Hill was killed off and didn't at all motivate the final conflict of the series, or that Soren was killed off off screen, or that the real Nick Fury, the hero of the series, had less of a relationship with the villain than did Gaia, who's a two-tier protagonist, who spent the season waffling with her stances and suddenly took over in the final battle. And it doesn't feel great that the big twist of the series, that Rhodey was a scroll, was learned by Nick Fury at some point off screen between episodes. It doesn't feel great that the best moments of dialogue of the season occurred between two known characters we thought, Fury and Rhodey, Fury and Gravik, but then we learned just really occurred between scrolls bullshitting about their histories. But here's the deal, I wasn't in the writer's room of the series, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of the people who wrote on the show would feel the same way. I think TV writers often have to make sacrifices and surrender battles to a bigger studio vision and notes, so instead I just want to focus on some more external evidence-based reasons that the studio struggled with Secret Invasion in particular. At the very least, think about it, Secret Invasion could have been Marvel's Andor, or Marvel's Peacemaker. Both of them lesser viewed, but well liked and extremely well executed seasons of television. Espionage stories set in heavily IP driven worlds. Peacemaker was a better Secret Invasion storyline than Secret Invasion was. So to this end, I think Marvel Studios struggled to overcome three challenges in particular when it came to Secret Invasion. Number one, we've talked about before what I call the scale dilemma. In an investigation I did on the Deep Dive channel, I broke down how in 2019, when Marvel only made two to three movies a year, there was only seven hours and 14 minutes total of MCU content to account for. In 2021, that expanded to 34 hours and 42 minutes across four films and five Disney Plus streaming series. And then in 2022, 22 hours and 42 minutes across three films, three Disney Plus series, and two special presentations. Now to be clear, I don't think any of us are complaining about having too much content, but since Marvel in particular depends on all of these storylines interconnecting in the same universe, it's just harder and harder to do that when you want all of these titles to also have distinct tonal variety and unique stakes. Secret Invasion has to take place in a world where Tiamat is poking out of the ozone layer and Captain Marvel's power set is supposed to be uniquely tied to an upcoming plot, making it pretty hard for a fourth character to suddenly get her powers. Furthermore, Marvel's approach to rely on reshoots, there were apparently extensive reshoots for Secret Invasion, and Marvel's tendency to reconfigure plot lines during post-production, sometimes you can pull that off, like the Russo brothers did that for Infinity War and Endgame and pulled it off, but I think it's especially damaging to the espionage genre, in which audiences expect characters 
characters to be a step ahead of us and outsmart each other and keep us guessing about their plans and to be brilliant master tacticians. Secret Invasion really just played out as a battle of idiots who could fumble the least. Like Fury and Gaia's Avenger DNA plan? That was so dangerously stupid. And Nick Fury's supposed to be one of the cleverest people in the MCU. If you're the kind of person who likes working on cars but doesn't have the room in your apartment for a full garage, then the Fast and Furious miniature collection from Fan Home might be just what you need. Fan Home is a brand dedicated to developing unique collections and build up models from your favorite fandoms, whether that's Star Wars, Marvel, or the Fast Saga. A Fan Home subscription gets you magazines loaded with trivia and stories about your favorite fandom, but also everything you need to build your very own family of awesome physics defined cars. The cars in Fan Home's Fast and Furious collection are 1 to 43 scale models made of die cast metal and injected ABS plastic. They are hand painted, so every detail is film accurate, including the interiors. They've got rubber tires that you can steer and roll wherever you want. Rio, outer space, Rome, or just your next family barbecue. With a fan home subscription, you'll get a new kit every month with easy to follow instructions on how to put everything together. You'll also get a Dodge Charger off-road model, an exclusive t-shirt, a mug, and three posters. But just like the movies, it's all about the cars. And family, but like a car-centric family. And look at these things, they're incredible. To get started with fan home, just click the link in the description below. The second issue that I think Marvel struggled with is Secret Invasion needs Avengers. The reason Brian Michael Bendis' comic crossover storyline is so beloved is that it seemed like every Marvel hero could tie in with it. And indeed, everyone pretty much does. But in the MCU, in Phase 5 on Disney+, Plus, it's just really, really hard to pull that off so that it retroactively fits in perfectly with 15 years of an interconnected cinematic universe and still stay on budget. Like, at the end of the day, they couldn't afford to bring in Chris Hemsworth or Robert Downey Jr. or Chris Evans or even Mark Ruffalo to show up. Thought they could pay Julie Louis-Dreyfus to do this, but uh, I guess not. The series instead provided two solutions. Reveal one, longtime Avenger is a scroll, in this case, James Rhodes, War Machine, but gave no answers on when that swap occurred and even had the gall to ask the question but not answer it. So we're just kind of left guessing how much of a beloved character's storyline was made up of lies. There's no catharsis. The second solution they offered was this final Super Scroll battle between Gaia and Gravik, which did feature nods to over 20 MCU characters, and I'll admit, it was fun to watch. But ultimately, it was two characters we cared less about cosplaying with literal arm sleeves of more interesting characters. It's not the powers of those characters that we love, it's the faces and the personalities of Drax and Groot and Mantis and Bruce Banner and Thanos and the rest that really matter to the fans. That plus the goofy VFX of Drax's arm being way too small for Gaia's body. It just kind of left us feeling hollow. But the third thing that Marvel's really struggling with is a central vision and really an identity crisis. Ultimately, what Secret Invasion was missing the most, and I think what the MCU desperately needs right now, is a strong central vision for all of these titles and what identity an espionage-filled Secret Invasion series would occupy in the overall MCU slate. Like, when you look at Star Wars, Tony Gilroy was able to outline his vision for Andor in its Rogue One prequel timeline with dark, grounded spycraft themes because he was able to pitch that as a contrast to the Dave Filoni side of Star Wars because Filoni has done such an effective job defining that side of the brand. The fact that Lucasfilm saw that in Gilroy's pitch document and believed in him led to Andor being a quality, if underwatched, title. And yes, there was just some amazing goddamn writing on that show because when characters were killed off, it mattered. Before Marvel Phase 4, Kevin Feige described it as a response to Endgame and kind of a reset. Okay, but for Phase 5, with Quantumania, Guardians Volume 3, and Secret Invasion, and the Marvels coming, we do not know what the central vision of Marvel is and what identity each of these titles is striving to hit, other than, I suppose, what She-Hulk made fun of Marvel for. CGI-filled, unfulfilling final acts. But Marvel has an identity crisis right now, which means some titles are going to be great if the director has a strong central vision for it and the studio didn't interfere with that, like as was the case with Guardians Volume 3, but other titles are just gonna feel weird and confusing, as is the case with Quantumania. Secret Invasion just did not have its own strong vision for what the show was going to be about. It started as a show about political conspiracies and xenophobia, but really ended as a show about American overreactionism and married life? Like, imagine what Secret Invasion would have looked like if it opened with President Ritson's address and then a montage of news anchors and world world leaders getting assassinated, some scroll, some human. What would happen next? That is what Secret Invasion should feel like. That should have been the tone for the entire series. But instead, Marvel left us once again thinking, well, maybe the next one will be better. I want to know your thoughts on Secret Invasion as a whole in the comments below. If you like what we're doing at New Rockstars, please subscribe to all three of our channels. You can follow me on all social platforms at EA Voss. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.